if your Windows machine has got a, a terminal application installed, then you can also use that. Uh, this is what you call a terminal, just a general, general, the general name for any interface that you use to check for connectivity or so, uh, system admin stuff. But since we're relating this more in a Windows environment, we're going to use the command prompt so we can much more easier. Uh, it's be much more easier to uh, to identify some of the key commands that Windows uses since most people use Windows a lot. So this command line interface, uh, first things first, let's check if our IP address are set up. That's where you use the IP config. So IP configuration. And it tells us the IP address that we have. Subnet mask with no, with no gateway. And obviously our Bluetooth or wireless devices do not have an IP address yet. It's perfect. And then we try a ping. First, let's try to ping the server, which had a dot ten, right, a one dot ten uh, network. So ping one and two. We're just trying to be pinging, basically trying to reach the IP address of one of the machines that you uh, you want to check to see if it's connected, it's online, it's alive, or whatever. So you just type its IP address with the ping in front of it. So the ping command one dot ten. And once you start seeing this with a summary like this, says it sent some four packets, four were received, and zero losses or zero percent losses. It means that um, you can reach that particular machine, so you should have connectivity problem with that machine at all. So it means from PC uh, two, we can reach our server for the idea. Uh, finance uh, department so that's a good thing you can reach which means you can reach our uh, finance applications and what have you now let's see if we can ping the other devices that are any devices that are within the finance department the same thing command but this case we're going to use um, we're going to ping the second pc which is pc3 and the ip address of that is 101 if i'm not mistaken so 192.168.1.101 it's also responding, so there's connectivity between uh, between PC2 and PC3, and I'm guessing it'll be the same for PC2, laptop one, 2 as well. So we can assume that there's connectivity, the same concept. IP config first to check its IP configuration. This is 102. Ping, uh, first ping the server, 192.168. That's 1, that's 10. Responding. I mean, ping PC uh, two and three, which is one hundred for PC two and one hundred one for PC three. So they are communicating. So pretty much, we do have communication or uh, connectivity among all the devices on this network. So that's great. Perfect right <clears throat> so that's static deployment of what ip addresses on this network now let's go to the hr department and do the same thing but we're going to change the ip network address for this we're using 192 8.1 we're going to use uh 196 so 192 168.2 so we a .2 network put a note over here so this is your 192.168.1.xx network okay um, click this at the top so the, the network here is the dot one network and the network on this side here will be the two network one and two one six eight that's two that's x x 
So it means that all IP assignments over here should have the same network address or a network node of 192.168.2 and for this side should be 192.168.1. So, as usual, static assignment, same concept, desktop, IP configuration, 192.168.2.100 and ready to start our way. One oh one. One or two, one or two, um, and one or three for the laptop. One or three. And then our server, we're going to maintain the dot 10 by one dot 2 network. And then 2, 168, 2, dot 10. So 2, 10. That one was 1, 10. Okay, so now let's test for uh, connectivity. I do some pinging. Command prompt. IP config first. Okay, we have 100. Now let's ping. 192.168.2.10. Our server first. It's responding. That's great. Now let's ping the other P other end devices like 101, which is the second PC. PC1, this is PC0, right? When PC0 trying to reach uh, PC2 or PC1, sorry, PC0 to PC1. So that's responding. How about PC or I think it's laptop, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's laptop zero. We should have 102 to respond in. And then you have 103 for laptop one. Laptop zero and laptop one. Responding. So you have responding, you have connectivity across board. If you wanted the laptop as well, just confirm that. Uh, <clears throat> ping uh, 192.168 to the 10, our server, on the HR side, responding. And uh, IP config first. Okay, 103. Okay, so we can ping uh, 101. Good, responding. 102. And we can even ping ourselves, I mean, itself as well, which is the loopback. Remember the loopback? Pinging yourselves. Looking back to yourself. Or the loopback IP address, a default loopback for the interfaces. Which in this case we one nine one two seven zero dot zero dot one. Yep, so I'll look back IP addresses by default. Okay, so we have connectivity on this network as well as on this network or the two separate units. Are we good? That's great. Now let's configure a web server. So let's say an application or a web server on the server here to see if these guys can access it. So let's be a finance guys. Let's say the finance guys do have a web server for hosting other you know web services for their finance unit. Let's to see how we can configure that. And that's the cool one of the cool things I love about some of the Cisco Packet Tracer is that it even allows you to set up a number of services within the servers. So you kind of emulate the server settings and simulate some of the key functionalities of that particular server service that you want. And to go there, to go for there, you have to go to services or to see where those are, the other services. So you do have HTTP, which is your web services, your DHCP for version six, for both version four and version six, 
if you have your <clears throat> your TFTP for uh, remotely into for for uh, storing of uh, files on your servers or remote locations and what have you on your routers for instance you want to create a, a TFTP uh, file server and it can help you store files remotely from from, um, from routers or other system that you might have uh, network, network device that you might have this is a pretty good application or server to build and this would be the uh, client version that you can use to access them if I'm not mistaken oh sorry this would be the server itself and then the client will just go through the command prompt using the terminal and then you do have your DNS uh, your syslogs your AAA authentications NTP for times protocols network time protocols emails standard FTPs IOTs and then VM management and then you do have a radius which is the cool stuff that um, Cisco have done with the new versions of the Cisco packet tracer I think this is version 6 or so uh, there's a version 7 supposed to be more upgraded much more enhanced you know but for now you know for starters let's just focus on like little the basic ones first so if web services you have to enable your HTTP uh, by default it's already enabled it's already set to on so which means your web server is actually already running uh, now we some of these some of uh, some files already um, set up for you we do have your copyright um, message file your Cisco logos your hello world HTML codes image and then your index let's edit the index okay edit the index and I made some changes over there with some of the commands or some of the messages you see on it like change the the center message that says Cisco packet tracer in this case we're going to change it to uh, uh, let me see I'm going to use um, welcome now I'm going to just say uh, datacom lab Lab one, come lab one, or lab demo. Yeah, make it lab demo instead. I come lab demo, and then we're gonna change welcome, the, which is the header message. It's a welcome to Cisco Packet Tracer, opening doors to new opportunities. Uh, minds wide open. We're gonna say welcome to. Um, finance. Actually, I'm going to change the names. Okay, finance uh, department. Um, web. Uh, web page. Yeah, basic stuff. And so using data comes the. Okay. Let's just maintain the data come and then the welcome should be finance instead okay so that's great and then once you die with those modifications save it yes and then um, go to desktop and uh, go to web browser so you basically want to access your own page so you're on the web server and you want to see the web server modifications settings that you have on the page have taken effect you can just type your own IP address right or you just reach yourself one that's ten and see what kind of message you see oh so you see it's modified now you have the data com lab demo and you have welcome to finance department web page opening doors to new opportunities mind wide open you can change all of those if you want to uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the header information as well and make it a uh, finance department instead. So let's go back to services and I'm going to make it a uh, finance Wait, what's going on here? Finance department. Uh, 
parchment cap. Save. Yes. Go to desktop again. And then refresh. So we have the funds with the defect. So that's cool. Now let's see if we can get these devices that are on the finance network or finance department to see if they can access the finance server's uh, web page. So we're on PC2 web browser and we just type the IP address which one does 10. Great, so we can reach the finance server as well, finance our web server, that's great. Laptop. Which one does 10? Same thing. So we are on these machines and we can access our server, our, our department server, which house mostly. Maybe it could house your department intranet services. So that's a good, good way to look at it. And then let's go to the HR as well. Services. Edit. We're just going to make this the HR department. Uh, human resource. Resource department. And then welcome to um, human resource. Department. So, so you have a um, department. And um, Okay, so yeah, which we, uh, we're gonna so it's it's gonna be welcome to HR. Um, so it's gonna be welcome to HR uh, resource department, opening doors to uh, new opportunities, mind wide open. So once you have that uh, in place, you save it, and then let's try and see if we can reach it directly. So this will be 192.168.2 network 10. Okay, so that's also up. Let's try and reach it from these other PCs or the other end devices. 192.168.2.10. Great, so we can reach our HR. the same great so now we do have our two departments well set up now we want to connect them together okay we want to connect them together uh, there are two approaches we can go with if we decide to go this approach which is I'm gonna see if uh, if some of you are following what uh, Net if your your IP subnetting or your subnets are have been well um, uh, well understood from 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 your uh, from some of the theoretical course you've taken on uh, on an IP addresses uh, it's well established within your knowledge so I'm gonna just go with this approach here use a cable. Today you can use, if you wanted to connect two switches together, you can use a straight through cable, okay? Because of the, um, the dupless mode they do have today, you can easily use, they automatically can uh, uh, switch and identify uh, uh, their transmissions across two similar, device, similar devices. But, you know, on a much more technical level, uh, if you want to connect two devices that are alike, 
or similar or in the same layer of the OSI model, you use a crossover cable. So I'm going to use a crossover cable. Now I'm going to use the fast Ethernet ports, any one of these, as uplink ports between the two networks. I'm connecting two departments here. So I've connected two departments together using a crossover cable. You can also use a straight through cable, but for technical, you know, implementation wise uh, setup, we're going to go with the <clears throat> With the crossover cable because we basically connecting uh, two similar devices. So the similar devices you use straight through, similar devices you use what crossover. Okay, great. So now there's connectivity, or there's a transmission being established across the two departments. But the question is, can they actually exchange information? Let's try it out. So let's say I'm on. Uh, finance department on a pc2 and i want to access uh, some of the hr uh, uh software let's say the hr is let's say hr page let's say hr is hosting uh, uh their own hr application that has got some of my some of the hr resource uh, informations like on a uh, uh condition of uh of employment, uh, uh, leave applications or leave conditions, uh, 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 other services that revolves around HR you want to have access to because I think within an, an environment you should be able to access some of these resources. So let's just see if we can actually pull that up from PC2 to HR department. So first things first, go to um, desktop. We need to close the command prompt. It's open, so close it. The browser, and then type the child service IP address one nine two one six eight one seven dot two dot ten. See what happens. Enter. If you notice, nothing happened. We couldn't load the page. It says timeout, request timeout. And if if uh, if you know your your IP address and subnetting very well, you know why you can access the uh, the the HR server or the HR page from the finance page. The reason why, if you, if you haven't figured out by now, is because you are on two separate networks that have just been linked together physically through a cable connectivity within two switches or within the two switches. So a more uh, realistic point or realistic illustration illustration you do not have access to any of the resources that are going to be on a different network at the logical level here and even at the physical level you're not going to have much of any connectivity Simply because you're on two separate network. This here is a dot one network, and this here is a dot two network. And since uh, we have two separate networks, communication between them becomes a bit of a challenge without a router. Keep in mind, routers are built to what? To forward packets from one network to another. So if you're in two separate network and you want to communicate without any kind of a router implementation or inclusion within your design, 
it becomes practically impossible to access any resources on either network. So still, it's like having uh, the two separate network without any cable connecting them. Or in this case, like this. This is probably what we have. Without a router, the cable we, think we use to connect two devices just doesn't make sense. It, that means basically meaning, meaningless. It wouldn't say much of any purpose. We get folks. So which means if we really want to establish connectivity between the two departments, we have to introduce a router. We good? Routers are needed to forward packets across different networks. Great, so how do we accomplish that? We go to routers or routers and then we pick one of these guys. I'm going to start with the, uh, you know, the uh, mid-grade ones or the small to medium size um, versions, the, the 1900 series. 1900 series router. And um, connect it up. So from a router to a switch, the similar devices. So we can use a straight through cable. I'm going to use the Apple ports. <clears throat> and the second app gig port on the on the router will go to this switch as well. So now we have a router connected. But we still can't forward packets yet because the router is not set up. Now by default, Cisco routers do not come with the interfaces enabled yet. They're not enabled. But I think I jumped the gun. Let me just go back to the configuration parts of some of the school devices. Since the school devices are purely uh, managed switches or managed devices, let's learn some of these little, little commands that you need uh, to help you get around some of the devices, especially at the switching level before we move on to the routing level. Now, earlier I pointed out the switches by default come with the interfaces enabled. That means they on automatic, automatically on once you power it up. But with the routers, they don't come with the interface enabled. You have to basically manually go into the, sorry, you have to go into configure into the, or into the device, the router itself, and then do the configuration or enable the ports. Okay. But let's just get around the little command that helps you manage some of these Cisco manageable switches first. So to access the um, the IOS of the Cisco switches or any Cisco devices, just click on it, and then you do have the physical view showing your ports layout. So you have your twenty four ports in segments of uh, twelve twelve, and then your two uplink ports. And uh, at the command line interface level is where you're going to see the iOS, uh, the iOS configuration and the command line inter uh, interactions. Now the configuration that shows you the interfaces, how to manually, you know, turn them off. If you're not very good with, if you don't want to learn the command interface, which is where you basically have to type everything out. You can use the config mode, which gives you the the much more click click options where you can change names and enable interfaces, disable them, turn them off, and all what have you. But uh, if you want to be very professional, go with the command line interface. 